With the common role of prostate cancer screening in this day and age, we are finding prostate cancer much earlier than we used to. Uh, at this time, prostate cancers are much more likely to be confined to just the prostate gland. This allows for men to experience a, a variety of treatment options of their choosing. One that Dr. Greg Jones and I can offer at Valdez Hospital is interstitial seed brachytherapy. Dr. Jones and I flew to Seattle, Washington in 2000 to learn how to do this from the experts. It involves the implantation of radioactive isotopes, typically we use iodine-125, into the prostate gland. If you imagine a mechanical pencil, you extend the tip of that about a quarter of an inch, that's a pretty good estimate of what a radioactive seed looks like. Well, it's an outpatient procedure done in same day, home same day. And for the appropriately chosen patient, it's an ideal way to treat their prostate cancer. It's a simple, straightforward procedure. Uh, does not require a post-operative catheter as typically the radical surgical removal of the prostate requires. And again, it's done in three easy steps essentially. For the man that we've determined has clinically organ confined prostate cancer, we'll initially do what's called a volume study. We basically make a three-dimensional exact model of their prostate. Dr. Jones and his staff will then calculate what's called a dosimetry plan. It's basically the mapping, if you will, a roadmap of where we will put these radioactive seeds. The next time we meet the patient is actually for the seed placement. Again, it's done in outpatient surgery under the anesthetic of the patient's choice. A good estimate or a good average to tell patients is we'll typically use 25 needles to implant about 100 radioactive seeds. The seeds stay forever. The radioactivity, however, goes away. The half-life of the typical radioisotope that we use is 60 days. So that means in two months, half the radioactivity is gone. Within a year, essentially, the effective dose of the radiation is absent. Men experience typically very little in the way of post-operative side effects. At about two to three weeks, there can be a sort of flare, if you will, of some uh, short-lived urinary symptoms, but then those typically go away. Men uh, uh, will not glow in the dark. Uh, they will not set off their airport uh, detectors. Uh, and it's a very straightforward uh, approach for the properly chosen patient. The role of brachytherapy is most appropriate for the man who has or is what we consider to be at low risk of the progression of his disease. Men who are good candidates for brachytherapy are also the same men who are good candidates for the surgical removal of their prostate gland. You can basically lump men into one of three categories at the time of their diagnosis of their prostate cancer. Those men who are at low risk of their disease progressing, regardless of how we treat it at intermediate risk and then at high risk. Brachytherapy used alone and radical surgery are ideal for the man who we believe is at low risk of his disease progressing. Now the nice thing about brachytherapy is it can also be combined with more traditional external beam radiation therapy. We often will use that for men who are in the intermediate and definitely in the high risk of their disease progressing. Those men will often uh, treat with this combined therapy. After Dr. Jones and I learned how to do this, uh, Valdez stepped up to the plate and bought all the necessary equipment that we have. Uh, that equipment has been further updated in the interim, especially in Dr. Jones' uh, radiation oncology suite. We have all the three-dimensional mapping equipment that we need, the uh, equipment that we use in the operating room and the supplier of the radioisotopes. It's all 21st century, all Buck Rogers. Uh, anything that we need, we can easily get and uh, we stay right on the edge of uh, current brachytherapy uh, in its role for prostate cancer management. The most important thing to remember about prostate cancer is that fortunately, many more men die with it rather than of it. This is a disease of older men, and older men often have other disease processes that are much more likely to kill them than their prostate cancer. That's the big picture that we try to relate to the patient is that the diagnosis of prostate cancer is typically not a death sentence, unfortunately, unlike some other malignancies that often are. We can often manage and then successfully treat the prostate cancer so it becomes the least of their worries.